Welcome to the second training video in the series Raw Development with Sigma Photo Pro. In this second video I will look at the controls in the Color Image Review screen. In addition I will give a few basic tips regarding monitor settings so that you can get the best results possible. This is a monitor test image which Fuji makes freely available via the internet. We can use this to look at a few basic monitor settings. First of all monitor brightness. In a relatively dark room, which is optimal for working on digital images, a setting of 30 to 40% of the maximum possible brightness is probably correct. Also, for monitor contrast, a setting of 40 to 50% should be correct. If we look at the test image, then the skin tones should look natural. The red in the color chart and on the plate should be neutral, that is, neither orange or magenta. In the same way, the blue sky should not contain hints of magenta or cyan. For anyone who is serious about calibrating their monitor, which I recommend, then the products and information to be found at spider.datacolor.com will be extremely useful. Now to the color image review screen. After SPP has been opened and a folder selected which contains X3F files, the color image review screen can be opened either by a double click on an image or with a right mouse click and selecting the menu point Review Images Color. At first, as with the thumbnail, only the JPEG version of the image is shown. After a few seconds, you can follow the progress with the progress bar here on the top right, the existing SPP settings will be applied to the image. Every change to the settings in SPP means that SPP re-evaluates the total effect of this change and the interaction of this change with all other settings from scratch. This understandably takes a few seconds and patience when working with SPP is very much a virtue. At the top right here are the buttons that turn the editing menus on and off. On the left side is the histogram with the over and under exposure warnings activated. Depending on the setting, areas of the image which are close to 100% black will be overlaid with blue and areas which are close to 100% white will be overlaid with red. In the case that a single channel is fully saturated, this area will also be marked with blue. Underneath the histogram is a navigation window as well as the information to the actual XY position of the cursor on the image and the RGB values for the corresponding pixel in the image. At the top, some of the most relevant EXIF data is shown. To the right of the buttons, which are familiar from the thumbnail view, is the control Current Unsaved Setting, which can be set to X3F, Auto or Custom. If X3F is chosen, then the settings from the camera which is stored in the EXIF file, or the settings from the last time the raw development settings for this image were saved within SPP, are applied to the image. The same adjustment can be made here on the right. Auto, which is a setting I never use, is SPP's best guess as to the correct settings. As soon as a change is made to any of the control sliders, or if the standard setting in the preferences is apply previous settings, then the display switches to custom. At the top, next to the current unsafe setting, are the controls to zoom the image view. When this is activated, all of the current settings are at first applied to the global image at the pixel level, so that any zoom level can be chosen. This, however, takes some time, and thus is not shown here. On the right are the main controls to work with an image. When an edited image is saved, it is possible to save the raw settings in the X3F file. Up to three different raw settings can be saved at the same time and if available can be chosen later by choosing the G1, G2 or G3 buttons under the X3F setting. If the X3F file is from an SD Quattro or SD Quattro H, the detail slider will be active, which means it can be set between smooth and crisp. This controls the micro contrast within the image. This control should be used carefully since either luminance noise can be greatly enhanced by moving the slider to the right or significant detail can be removed from the image by moving the slider to the left. As such, for most images the slider is best left in the middle. Tonal adjustments, white balance setting, color mode and color adjustment are the four areas where most of the work is done and these will be described in more detail in the following video. 
On the right at the bottom is the last menu, which, like all the other menus, can be moved around as a floating window. Here are some controls that I rarely use. Highlight control can be left set to 1. This control is useful if the highlights contain an undesired colour cast. Chromatic aberration correction is used if the lens used for the image has chromatic errors in the sharp edges within the image. If the lens is a sigma lens, then activating the lens profile and moving the slider to the right can, for certain lenses, offer significant improvements. Fringe correction and ghosting colour reduction are controls I have never needed to use. Finally, noise reduction. Luminance noise reduction can very quickly result in a loss in detail. For this reason, I strongly prefer to have the luminance noise reduction set to an absolute minimum, that is, with the slider set to the left. The requirement for chroma noise reduction depends very much on the ISO setting, the exposure time, and whether the exposure is well balanced across the image. Images which have a high ISO setting, or images with a long exposure time, several seconds for example, or images which were in general underexposed and therefore have to be lightened in SPP can contain quite a bit of magenta green chroma noise. In this case the chroma noise reduction slider is moved slightly to the right. In any event this is very specific for each image and in order to judge an image correctly I place both sliders to the left in order to limit the noise reduction. The menu monochrome is used to produce black and white images from the raw data and this will be covered in a separate video. In the next video I will look at the editing and saving of a raw image using the control elements described here. Thank you and good luck with your Sigma camera and SPP.